because he's fighting inside more of Zuma Nelson, he's landing more shots. Of course, he runs the risk of taking even more, but what does it matter? He's proven that he's going to take punishment, whether outside or inside. He would take more shots on the outside, like he just took a left hand there, as opposed to being inside. Inside, he has a better chance because he is... He appears to be a little stronger and carries a better punch than Pernell Whitaker. Inside, he has the chance to initiate the action. Outside, he's always being beaten to the punch. Exactly, because on the, on the inside, he has a chance of being able to counter one of Pernell Whitaker's by right hand there. Good right hand by Azuma Nelson. Nelson back with the jab. And there's a little mouse under the left eye now for Nell Whitaker. Probably from one of those right hands. I guess you notice that the style of a Zuma Nelson's chain. As opposed to his arms being crossed, he now puts both hands in front of him. His style of fight has changed since the earlier round. More the conventional way. gets out of the corner. All he, do, all he does is pivot. Whitaker starting to assert himself again now within the last 20 seconds. I thought that was Whitaker's most impressive round because he took some punches as he had in the previous round and yet he still fired. Take off this three four first combination. You know what I mean? Bang, 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 bang. You understand? Be careful because you're throwing too many punches at him, right? right. Settle down. Let him carry through fast now. Yeah? Inhale, yeah. baby. Yeah. Sometimes if you, if you charge it, fall right on his chest. You know what I mean? Like when, when you're going back, when he's up to you, fall right up on his chest. Okay. But when you fall, open up. Bang, bang, bang. So he can't take off. So it ain't got to be hard. Just busy. Right? All right, now you're winning like a son of a Tom, now it's time for war. What I want. No more, no more. Harold Letterman, Tom, it's time for what? Your scorecard. Larry, I've got an 80 to 72, eight rounds to nothing in favor of Colonel Whitaker. I think that the closest the Zoom even came to winning a round was possibly the seventh where he tried to rush Colonel, but Pete keeps picking him off with the right hand. Every time his Zoom rushes in, Pete nails him with a right jab and a straight left. Well, I disagree with you, uh, Harold, to this extent. I gave Nelson the seventh round. His trainer in, in the corner in that round said, now let's go to war. I don't know what he's been trying to do up to now, but maybe there's a higher level. Well, sometimes the change in language elicits a different response. I don't know what Nelson can do other than what he's been trying. He's just faced with the prospect of fighting somebody who's a little bit rangier, considerably quicker and is going to beat him to the punch most of the time. Jabs that Clinton would have been throwing. Well, he's three. put on a clinic in that area. Oh, he's really doing a number on his own else with the jab. Good right hand by Whitaker, followed by a right hand by Nelson. He comes back with a right of his own. The thing about speed, you must understand, it nullifies power, spent everything. It just totally nullifies it. Why? Because you get your punches in so quick, you break the rhythm of, your, of the opponent. 
and it's frustrating. And this is what's on the face of Azuma Nelson, the frustration. He can't get set. He can't get his balance. Clay Whitaker keeps turning, keeps giving him angles, throws combinations, ties his man up. He's doing everything right. A good fight for Clay. Excellent, I must say. Nelson, incidentally, will not lose his Super Featherweight Championship, even should he lose this bout. He has the option of going back down to 130 pounds and fighting the winner. This is the kind of type of fight that Colonel Whitaker believes the public wants to see. A technical fight, scientific fight, give him a show. He feels that like he's an entertainer. Nelson will have the chance to fight a winner of a bout between Jeff Bennett and Juan Laporte. Retain his title. It would be a lot easier for Azuma Nelson because these guys' speed, hair speed is nowhere near that of Brent Whitaker. Yeah, this was a tough assignment to move up and wait against a faster fighter than just about anybody in your division. Look at the jab. Let's go knock out, you got a big round. Sound for, for good. Cause what the fuck is with you? You're not punching. This man with this fight like, like another fight. Sam, please, please. Sam. You know nothing. You, you freak. What, what the heck happened with you, man? I was not the guy out. Nine minutes is too long. I'm not. It wasn't outside. It was a guy swinging. I hit you. Okay. And then, Okay. Only on the inside, right? Okay. Now you're doing a damn good job. Okay. Keep yeah. that left hand going, right? Okay. All right. Now up and down. Hey, the wild swings come up and down, up and down. Don't have your back to the ropes at no time. Five minutes in the center. Five minutes in the Come on. Get that ready for a minute. Nelson's trainer asked him what the hell happened to him. And we all know the answer. Everybody in this building does. Cornell Whitaker happened to him. Renell Whitaker and the nearly 50 jabs per round, or in fact a little over 50 jabs per round, of which he's landing close to half of them. That's the way he fights. Those were his punch stat numbers coming into the bout. What's giving Nelson problems the fact that Colonel Whitaker has those great legs. Good bouncing. A lot of life to him. He's one, Cornell Whitaker is one of the few guys, fighters rather, that can punch a guy other than Camacho and get behind you. Well, obviously, he has it all with the sole possible exception of punching power. That may come as they continue to develop and they continue to fight. And again, with the weight program, they can make a difference. But it's something that will take place down the road. It's just like with uh, Holyfield, Evander Holyfield on the weight program. He's a lot stronger, but I never thought Evander was, was weak anyway. Of course, strength doesn't always translate to punching power anyway. It does not. It, uh, it, it builds endurance and what have you. It depends on what kind of program you're on. Punching power is a mystical thing that has something to do with leverage and timing and a few other things that not even all fighters understand. It's like speed. You don't build speed. You make you create accuracy. You don't actually build power. You build strength, but you don't build the power. That's technique. Leg man, I can tell. Yes, he's been a leg man all night long. It's a big giveaway. <laughs> Trading punches at close quarters. One of the few 
times in the round that Nelson has been able to find Cornell Whitaker. By and large, Whitaker's just been too elusive for him. And now as round 10 comes to a close, we're going to take a look back at something significant in the heavyweight division that took place on the undercard here. Just about an hour and a half ago, the veteran Greg Page out of Louisville, Kentucky, had a chance to continue his comeback to prominence in the heavyweight division, headed toward an apparent probable fight somewhere along the way with Mike Tyson. But the apple cart was upset by a journeyman from Los Angeles named Mark Will, who pounded Page with wild punches through most of the fight until here in round six, he landed a couple of roundhouse right hands that set up that. And after that, referee Carlos Padilla stopped the fight, even though Page was able to get up before the count of nine. And we presume, Larry Merchant, that...